Today we're doing our iBox versus Geyser's review. You iBox guys got some explaining to do. <laughs> Hey guys, how do we keep it dirty off-road? You guys have been asking for it for a while, so we're finally gonna do it. Our iBox versus Geyser video. In this video, we're gonna give you guys an overview of what the difference is between the two springs, why you wanna run them, and what's my pick. If you guys know, we ran the Geysers on our 17 Raptor. We ran that for a couple years, loved them. People kept telling us that we should be running iBox, and on paper, it didn't sound right to me. On paper, the iBox don't sound like they would be a good choice, right? They're linear. They are more advertised as a lift rather than an actual, you know, spring for off-road. If you don't watch the rest of this video, here's kind of my overview on the two shocks. Geysers are if you want to go off-road all the time. iBox are if you daily you're trucking, you occasionally want to go off-road. Some of you guys may be a little surprised by it. The iBox is a really good spring overall, and it does feel really good. Its on-road manners are really great. They are not stiff. A lot of people told me that they were stiff, but when we started running them, they did not feel stiff at all. They're actually really soft. So they offer a really good mix of on-road performance and off-road performance. It's kind of like the nice middle. If you're going on fire roads, you're going on fast trails like that, that don't have too many surprises, the iBox do really, really well. If your main focus is off-roading and looking for a low-cost solution, geysers are the better choice. Geyser is a progressive spring rate. It is designed for off-roading. It can soak up the bumps really, really good. And it does a really good job overall, but its on-road manners are not that great. The geyser springs are much, much stiffer than the iBox, and you can feel it. You can feel every little bump on the road, you'll feel it. Once you get off-road, they smooth out because now you're into that progressive spring at the top, and they feel much smoother off-road. So there's kind of the difference between the two. Now, that's not to say that the iBox are a, a bad spring. They're not, they're actually a really good spring. I'm actually finding the combination of the iBox on the Raptor with you know, some very light mods in the back. It's actually pretty nice. The drawback comes is when you start stiffening up the back end with Devers or with Icons, that's when you really start finding the, the drawbacks of the iBox spring. And it's not really what they were designed for, right? Both the iBox and the geysers were designed very differently. The iBox only give you about a 1.75 lift on the front, while the geysers give you two and a half. And that translates to a very different ride uh, on-road and off-road. The iBox do really great on fire roads. We've been doing a lot of high-speed trails and they just ride really well. The truck rides really well. But as soon as you start getting into something with heavy chop, that's when the real limitations come of the springs. You really, it, they just rebound back quite a bit. They actually changed the dynamics of the live valves. The live valves were actually pretty decent. They didn't, I didn't get too much rebound on them. But as soon as we put these springs on there combined with my really stiff springs in the back, the front end is just rebounding like crazy if we hit something hard. Like if we do a jump or if we do whoops, the front end rebounds quite a bit. That's something that we weren't getting with the geysers. The geysers were a, a better fit for the stock shocks because the stock shocks were designed to work with a progressive spring. The stock spring is a progressive spring. The iBox is a linear spring. The shock's not tuned for that linear spring, so it doesn't respond the same way. So keep that in mind. If you do decide to go with the iBox, they are cheaper, right? They're about half the cost, but be careful on your limitations on the trails. You will find the limit of those springs on the trails. We did do some testing with the iBox, so next we're gonna go sit down and actually go over some of that footage and show you what's happening in those videos. So we're gonna go through some of this footage to show you guys what the truck is doing in these situations. Now in this section, we picked it specifically because even though it looks relatively tame, there's a nice little hidden bump here that when you take it at speed, it really does a test on your suspension. Took it through here at our normal speed. Yeah, and see how the truck rebounded a little bit? There's a different angle right there for you guys. And then here it is in slow motion. I want you guys to pay the close attention to what it's doing right here. The suspension's almost fully tucked in all the way right here. And this thing is relatively minor. I mean, this bump doesn't look like that much, right? It's relatively small, it's smooth, but it's one of those bumps that surprises you on the trails. It looks like it's not gonna be that bad, and then you hit it, and your suspension bottoms out. Now, if you look here with the iBox, our suspension almost went all the way in at the front. Now by comparison, look at the back. That's the back end hitting that same spot with a ton of gear, with our devers and our bump stops. 
and it didn't tuck all the way. I think here we barely, I don't even think we used the bump stops in the back, but it just kind of shows you what's going on. That front end is almost completely tucked on a relatively tame bump. And that's one of the key things that I want to highlight, right? Ibox are a great street spring. They give you decent off-road manners, but you can quickly find the limits on it on a trail that looks relatively tame. I mean, this right here, we were maybe going 50, and we were going too crazy. As soon as you hit that bump, boom, look at that. And look at the way it bounced back. Truck hits the dip, front end pogo's right back, and the whole truck takes another dip. You really wanna avoid that as much as you can off-road. Now here, we found a small jump. And if you look at the terrain, it doesn't even look like a jump. But it is a small jump. It's nothing too crazy. It's what most of us are going to hit on the trails on a regular basis. You would most likely take this jump accidentally. But I also wanted to see, show you guys how it performs on a small quote-unquote jump. Okay. It's looking pretty well, right? It's kind of a close-up angle, so you can kind of see the truck did get some air. Front tires got off the ground. Rear tires not so much, very little. Then it does a full tuck in. Again, same performance as before. Full tuck in on the front, little bit of tuck on the back, not all the way. Suspension in the back's doing its thing. Now look at it from the angle of the actual drone. It's a completely different view up here. You can really see the trunk bounce back quite a bit. It rebounded a lot. A little bit slower. It almost did a little second little bunny hop on its own. So again, relatively minor stuff. Not too, not too crazy, but look at this one going in, right? Right there. See that? The way it went into that, it's almost bottoming out all the way. Suspension is definitely working overtime. And on the actual bump, look at that. Now here's an example using the geyser springs. The geyser springs perform very differently and this is a much faster jump taken at 85 miles per hour. And you can see here, front end is responding identically to the back. We're not getting full tuck. Truck's better protected. So what a difference, right? Bigger jump and very different performance. The final test that we did is we went ahead and took the truck on some whoops. And that's when, you know, honestly, even the stock suspension has a hard time with this. These are about 10 inch whoops, maybe, maybe one foot deep whoops. So they're pretty deep. And we took them about 30 to 40 miles per hour. And even the stock suspension is going to have a hard time with these. I mean, you really have to get a pretty built up truck to do these. But let me show you what, how the truck did through here. <laughs> Yeah, that was not comfortable. I mean, you can see it just bouncing over the it, complete tuck at the front. Then the back rebounds a little bit. The front rebounds, tuck, rebound, tuck, rebound. Yeah, it's it's not a comfortable ride. I mean, these stock suspension trucks can't really handle whoops that big. Now, by comparison, we did have my buddy helping us out here. He had his mid-travel kit from SVC, and what a difference. In slow-mo, you could see that the tires never stopped making contact with the ground, and that makes a huge difference. It's not like us that we were jumping from whoop to whoop. With the mid-travel kit, for the most part, his tires were staying on the ground the whole time. That's what you want from your mid-travel kit. Eventually, we'll get to that level where we're going to add an extra, you know, quite a bit more uh, capabilities to the truck. We are going to be working on saving our pennies to get that uh, HM kit. In conclusion, I mean, if you saw from the clips, you saw from everything going on, it's not a bad spring. You just got to understand that it's going to give you some limitations. Again, to paraphrase, if you mainly use a truck on the street and occasionally go off-road, the iBox will be a really good spring. If you mainly want to have your Raptor do off-roading, the Geysers is far better option. And honestly, you can't go wrong with either. They are probably the best low-cost solution to get an extra height up front and improve the performance of the front end. The next level up is obviously shocks, and that's when really things start really getting crazy. Now, as for our pick, as far as what we're going to do going forward, we're actually going to put some geysers back on this truck. I'm not quite ready to put a full suspension on here, and COVID and everything else going on killed my investment, so I can't really do it anyway. So we're going to be looking for some geysers and put them on here and do a follow-up video to show you guys how the geysers respond with the live oven if there is a difference. I actually want to see how this does, too, because I'm a little afraid that the height's going to be too much with the live valves. Dumb question, why can't you put this on this side and the other thing on the other side? Because then it'll be lopsided. But it's a good testing. No, it'll be lopsided. It won't be a good testing. Yes, it will. No, it won't. It could help. No, shut up. 
Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on this. Too much bad information out there on these springs. You know, everybody says they're the best and they're amazing and they're a great middle ground spring, right? It's better than stock, but it's not gonna really add too much to that off-road capability. It's just gonna add height, that's it. If you really want to add extra performance and give you the ability to do much more, you really need to look at the guides. And that information you're not gonna find anywhere. There's a lot of anecdotal information. You go to the forums, there's a bunch of crap information there. There's a lot of people say that these are amazing off-road and they are great to a point. Like I said, they're great to a point. If you got a nice landscaped off-road, they do great there. As soon as that road starts getting choppy, you find the bottom quick. As soon as the road starts getting choppy, you find the bottom quick of these springs. And I've actually bottomed out that front end a few times running these. I'm a little bit different though than most. I'm very familiar with this truck. I drive faster. I got a lot of experience in there. I'm too fast, honestly. Link in the description how he totaled his first truck. Shut up. Make up your own mind. Figure out what type of driver you are. Do you want to daily your truck and not impact that ride quality on the pavement and occasionally off-road? You got to go iBox at that point. You really want to step up your game off-road at a low cost, right? With Before you start upgrading all the shocks, geysers are the better bet. Don't forget to comment below. Put any questions down there. We'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. If you guys have anything else, let us know. Let us know your feedback on the springs. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, we're getting closer. Yeah.